love you. That means you have to die. <laughs> oh my god. What's up? Are there any other gays in the house besides me? Woo! Yeah, two, four. Nice. Ten percent. That's about what they say, right? Alright, where are my straights? We got straights? Oh, come on. Kathy Griffin comes out and goes, Where are my gays? They go nuts. Where are my straights? That's my thing. Alright, so I'm nice to straights. You're the ones making the gays. We can't make ourselves, so thanks on. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I like to think of myself as a crossover gay because I can go right in the straight world and go completely undetected if I don't um, talk or move. I swear to God, it's amazing. It's amazing. Sir, obviously straight, sir. What's your name? Dylan. Dylan, okay. Good example. Dylan, you're never going to date another Dylan. So it's, it's a weird thing. When you're gay, sometimes you date someone with the same name. It's awkward, right? And you're like, well, yeah, really not so bad. Next time you're having sex, shout out your own name. I swear to God, awkward. Just try it. It's true. It's really, really disturbing. So I like telling people I'm gay. I like to come out for myself because when I was younger, I was actually outed by my parents. True story. They sat me down and my mom was like, um, <laughs> Scott, honey, we think there's a chance you might be gay. My dad was like, you're so gay. <laughs> Oh my God, what the hell? Like what, you know, I thought about it now. I'm like, what made me gay as a kid? And what made my parents come to me at five years old and sit me down? I was like, what the, what the hell? But I figured it out. Freshen up gum. You remember the hard gum? You put it in your mouth, you bite it, burst liquid, hello. <laughs> then I started thinking, well, all the candy. I mean, blow pops, Mike and Ike's, ring pops. <laughs> Even cereal. You are what you eat, Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> like, okay, all I'm saying is if I grew up eating, um, Pussyos, you wouldn't, I wouldn't be dead. My dad would be cramming them down my throat. Eat your Pussyos! No, I don't want your Pussyos! That's how I ran as a child. Vagina crisps, something, you know, like... Honey Bunch is a clit. I don't know. Okay. Lesbians love that joke because I combine vagina with breakfast cereal. Win-win! <sighs> vagina. I've never seen a vagina live. I'm pure gay. No, I'm, I'm sure they're lovely. I don't like to offend or anything. I wouldn't know what to do with it. I'd stick flowers in it or something. <laughs> a vase. Maybe lip balm, something. <laughs> Febreze, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> the guys go, ooh, the girls are like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> girls, just a hint, okay? <laughs> and not too much. Just a little spritz. <laughs> Keep it simple. My mom loves that part of the act because I say vagina over and over, and she thinks if I keep saying it, I'll like it. <laughs> Coming up on 35, I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> For a mom. My mom's so crazy. My mom's so crazy. Do you know anybody like this that has, um, like, um, how do I wanna say this? Like, she has a TV, but now it's broken. She needs a new one. It's not really broken, she just doesn't have the remote. So, you know, like, anybody like that that just has to buy new stuff all the time? She's so crazy. The other day she told me she needed a new cell phone. We went to the store. And she said to the guy, I need a new cell phone. I have like dust on it or something, so therefore it's broken. And the guy said, okay, we'll have to give you a new annual plan. She goes, okay, but I only want a plan that's going to cover the minutes that I use for that year. He's like, okay, ma'am. And he looks up at her account and he goes, ma'am, we don't have a six-minute plan. I said, six minutes in one year my mom used her cell phone. Ah. I'm like, but I think it's because she's technically challenged. Like, she just doesn't get technology. Like... I bought her a DVD player, and like a week later I went back, and you know the little tray, the door was broken off. I'm like, what the, what the hell happened? It's brand new. She's like, I was peeking in to see if the DVD was rewinding. <laughs> exactly. What? Oh my but it's really fun as a comedian. Like, I'd love to mess with her. So I went out for her birthday, and I bought her a Blackberry. I was like, that's going to be insane. She's like, no. yeah. Okay, it was a calculator, but I told her it was a Blackberry. <laughs> Still couldn't work it. The look on her eyes, oh my god, I'm never going to figure this out. <laughs> I taught her to write boobs, and I was like, save. <laughs> what else do I want to tell you? 
So actually, my parents were pretty good parents. They raised me with no prejudice. They're like, we love everyone, you know, love the blacks and love the Jews and treat everyone equal. No, not the Asians, but everybody else. Like, <laughs> treat them fairly. And, which I really appreciate. And I grew up that way. And now that I'm, I'm very enraged when people are, you know, racist and all that stuff. But I live in Harlem and I do get comments from time to time. And I was walking to work and I wore these jeans actually, a little tank top, you know, a little gay outfit. And I was walking down to the subway and this guy's leaning on a pole and he goes, damn, we need to get you niggas out of here. And I was like, completely shocked. I couldn't believe that he knew that I was black Irish. It was so weird. <laughs> And then the other day, someone said fag, and I was like, oh my god, an English man needs a cigarette, someone help him! Like, <laughs> clearly I was wrong, and he was calling me a fag, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, I don't understand that. Like, I understand you're trying to make me feel better or whatever, but, like, what, you know, what am I doing to you? Do, do you work for the vagina industry? Or are you losing money on me? <laughs> like, the vagina industry convention, and he's like, if you'll see our chart here, you'll see the decline in vagina penetration. And I think it's the cocksuckers right here. How do we get them back? No, I just don't get it. Oh, our world is crazy, there's a lot of, does anyone not watch the news? Like anyone else? Just me? Really? No, you don't watch it? Okay, right, I don't watch the news at all, but not because it's upsetting, or not because like, I'm all upset about the war, or this and that, because I feel like I missed an episode and I fucking can't catch up. I'm like, what the hell, right? And I'm taking a lot of shit for that, because I'm like, no, I won't watch it, I don't know. But, so I've decided to try and amend that situation, so I registered on Netflix for old episodes, so, like, catch them out. Catch them. Oh my god, I just watched the best episode the other night. I think that John Bonet's parents had something to do with it. <laughs> don't, don't say anything, I haven't seen it. I'm gonna watch it tonight, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> John Bonet, the little princesses. Oh, so sad. So sad. I think that that's where body dysmorphia starts. Do you know what body dysmorphia is? Yeah. Yes, what? Why do they always do that? Every show that somebody goes, yeah, and then silent. Body dysmorphia is the cause of anorexia, it's the cause of bulimia, cause of fat girls wearing baby tees, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's when you have a false body image and you see something in the mirror that you don't, might make sense at all. No. All right, um, I'll give you an example. Well, oh, excuse me. Okay, you look at me, you see a tall, dark haired, good looking, worked out, really, really, really well hung guy. <laughs> and when I look in the mirror, that's what I see because I don't have body dysmorphia. <laughs> that's the example of what it is. No. <laughs> I love your laugh, what's your name? <laughs> That's a hard name to spell. How do you spell that? Oh my God. Does anyone have any questions for me? Want to know anything about me? Anyone? Single? Sing am I single? I am single as of Monday. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are so shy now. What's up? I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, yeah! Baltimore in the house. You know what? Make sure you add the tip to their chat because they're fucking cheap people that are <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually love sports, but this is from Dodgeball. Gay Dodgeball. Can you imagine? It's, I'm reliving my teams right here. I'm reliving my childhood. Like when it was smear the queer and like I was beat the shit out of them. Now I'm coming back and I'm like, no, it's me. So I have a lot of issues. I have a lot of issues. All right, so what should I end with? Um, how about this? What's up with anal bleaching? <laughs> have you heard of this? I think it was in the New York Times that the, the women in porn started this and now they're bleaching around their hole so that the skin tone blends in with the rest of their skin tone. Why? Where's your hole? I don't know. Like, what? What the fuck are they doing? I don't know. It's really bizarre. And it's really, really expensive, right? If I were going to do it, I'm waiting for crust anal bleaching strips. Right? It should be like, the cost, right? I can't talk now, I have my strips in. Alright, I'm Scott Ryan, you guys are great, thank you so much.